What's going on everyone? It's your boy Shook Nasty from Shook Earth Media and today I thought in celebration of the new Life is Strange game, Life is Strange 2 True Colors, which I, I have yet to play, but it's newly out this week, it's a fresh release, and I thought it'd be a good opportunity to discuss these comic books. Life is Strange, they've been doing them from Titan Comics over the past year or so, and I'm, I'm a fan of these comics because I like the original Life is Strange. I know it has its flaws, but it's still just one of my favorite games the past 10 years. I'm a big fan of these adventure games, drama games. I, I, I like this stuff. As much as I like, you know, shooters and RPGs and all this more compl complex gameplay styles, I do still like this interactive drama type of storytelling. And I think it's a, just a really powerful story that was, a, you know, it's, it's a great experience overall. I really enjoyed it. I wasn't as big a fan of Life is Strange 2. I had a lot of disappointments with that, but that, that's a video for another day. We'll maybe discuss that another time. Let me know if you guys would be interested in that. But what I really wanted out of a sequel is what this comic gave us here. Now, this comic takes place after the end of the first game, but... It takes place after uh, the Sacrifice Arcadia Bay ending. So they decided to sacrifice Arcadia Bay to save Chloe. And that is where the story starts. Now, first of all, I'm, I'm a fan of this art style. I think it really fits the Life is Strange universe. I like, uh, I like how the characters are drawn. I feel it's very true to the story. I mean, we just got some great cover art here. I'm a big fan of like how everything looks. And then eventually we get Rachel Amber in it and she looks like her counterpart in the prequel before the storm. So all of that's really cool. Now, what I really wanted from this story is something that never really materialized, which is that I, they never discussed any sort of guilt that they have over sacrificing Arcadia Bay, which seems to me like, like they're sad that Arcadia Bay is gone, but they don't seem to take responsibility for it the way I feel they should. And what's strange is that I can think of many ways that they can justify it without sounding selfish, right? Maybe, what if, so the, the storm was created by Max controlling time, right? That's the implication of the first game. Maybe if she went back in time again to try to fix things again, the storm would be even bigger the next time. And there's no way of knowing that without trying it. So maybe in that moment, Max is like, you know, I love Chloe and all that, but also if I go back in time again, maybe it'll be even worse next time. So I'd sacrifice Chloe and still lose everything, right? So I think there's a lot of ways you could justify that. And especially with the uncertainty of... You know, the fact that she could go back in time, but every time she does so, it creates a potential disaster. So I thought that I, could be an interesting interesting element of the story, but it never seems to be addressed. They seem to be much more interested in the relationship between the characters, which, which is all good. So the plotline revolves around Max getting thrown out of her current timeline into another timeline and trying to get back home, right? That's the main conflict in the story, is her being stranded in another timeline. In this timeline, Rachel never was murdered, so it's a very different dynamic. We do get to see them struggle with uh, Max having to deal with feelings for Chloe that she has, and how it's kind of awkward to live with them and stuff, but still they have this friendship going on, this bond that it is inseparable they do a good job of separating the different timelines by like chloe's hair and subtle differences so i i, I do enjoy that's the storyline in general i will say uh they do have characters new characters that are like this band that they're touring with i don't really care so much about the new characters i'll be honest uh i think that they, they they're an important backdrop and it's important that they're there but they're just not as interesting as the side characters in the game itself this new character here on the right, or Tristan, he's an interesting character, and uh, he also kind of has a superpower where he was invincible, invisible for most of his life, and he was spotted by Max. Now here we get into my potential issue with, and, and this is with the Life is Strange franchise as a whole, 
and why I don't necessarily think it should have been a franchise to begin with. I get that they want to capitalize on the success of the first one, but I will say the logical endpoint of keeping this series going is just X-Men. It's just a bunch of different super-powered people throughout the country. And, I mean, we have Life is Strange 1, we got Max. Life is Strange 2, we got Daniel. And Life is Strange 3, we have somebody who else, somebody else is super-powered. I forget her name right now because I haven't played it yet. But you have three super-powered people, and now we have a fourth one. And now there's a fifth one later on. It's like, everybody's got superpowers. You get a superpower. You get a superpower. Everybody gets a superpower. And it's just like the... I think that it's now seeming like, especially because they're all centered in the Seattle area. I don't know if there's something special in the water or something like that. But if they could come up with some kind of explanation for it, maybe. But it really seems like every other person in this universe has superpowers now, even though... I feel like it should feel like a one in a billion chance it should be extremely rare so that's the the strange part about making this a franchise is that eventually there are just so many super powered people that it really feels you know like a marvel universe thing except the indie version of that so you know i don't know i like in the first one her superpower is emblematic of who she is as a person, what she's seeking to do with her career. She wants to capture moments from the past because she has this intense longing and nostalgia that just is so inspirational to her. That's why she has the superpower that she does. It's more about who she is as a person than the actual superpower itself. Now, they're starting to get away from that, and Life is Strange 2 didn't really have any symbolism like that. And I'm not sure, I think this new one seems to have some sort of symbolism there with uh, her empathy power. But, you know, it's just not, not quite the same, not quite as meaningful as it was in the first one. I do like this character, though, and he's a very important part of making this, this whole plotline work. So, in general, I really like these first 12 issues here, and it peaks in a way that is exciting. There's an exciting part where uh, they're in a party and somebody's like, I, I forget the particulars of it, but there's somebody has to be saved by Max using her power. But again, we don't address the fact that her superpowers cause a storm. Like she's not, doesn't seem to be concerned about that at all. I don't know if she's thinking about it, just not saying it, but, uh, yeah, so some of the dialogue is a bit on the nose, but a lot of it is very good. It seems very genuine. So, in general, I really like this comic. I give it a thumbs up. If you're a Life Strange fan of the first game, and you're maybe a little disappointed by the sequels and stuff, you'll probably like this. I know I did. This is the really the sequel that I wanted, and I'm excited to see where it goes. I will say the latest issues, I'm not sure what's going on with it lately. It's been delayed many times. But well, we have these late, the second run here called Partners in Time. And then these ones, these ones kind of dragged on. It had this interesting premise of like them going on tour uh, with the band characters. And it, it turns out one of the band characters has superpowers as well. And it just, it, it doesn't, it feels weird like I already talked about. But this, it, it did drag on a little bit. You know, I did like uh, how we have a conflict here with like an accident and she has to use her superpowers yet again to stop it from happening and uh, you got some great covers here I mean th this cover is just fantastic but uh, yeah so this I thought the pacing slowed down a lot and I was just uh, it felt like it should be ending toward or wrapping up or getting to a climax point and maybe they will but uh, yeah in general I really like this comic I think it's essential reading for Life is Strange fans, but yeah, I, I'm curious to see how it goes, and I, I'll probably review these issues as they come out in the future to give my opinions on them, but yeah, in general, I like this series a lot, so yeah, I'm not quite sure of the status of where the series is at the moment, if they're still producing issues or not, I hope it's not cancelled, because I would like to see a conclusion here, but... I would like to see the storm stuff and the certain things I mentioned addressed 
But if they don't, this is still a fine series, and it's a lot of fun. And I am excited to see how it, the climax happens and how it ends. So those are my thoughts on the Life is Strange comic series, guys. Let me know if you agree or disagree in the comments down below. I will probably continue to review these as they come out. So, yeah, let me know if you guys enjoy that. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.